Hi everyone, welcome back to the Swift Arcade. How are you doing? I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Super excited for today's episode. Today we're gonna to take the swipeable view controllers we created last episode and transform them into something called an NSFetch result controller. This is really a core data construct that is really helpful for allowing you to fetch results, eloquently display them in UI table views, and it really takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting between keeping core data in sync with your UI kit controls. So let's jump in and take a look at how to convert this uh, simple swipeable app into one that's gonna work with NSFetch results. So in our last episode of swipeable table sales, we saw how we could take uh, a table view controller and basically add swipe actions to it and able to add different elements to our GUI. And this was all backed with a simple array. So you can see what is driving this. This is just an array here of video games, which we're just using standard UI kit controls. And we're putting that and adding that into our table view by clicking the add button and then directly updating our table view itself. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this example and now convert it into one that uses NSFetch results view controller. So basically this is a core data construct where we're gonna replace this array with a NSFetch results controller. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up and do that so you can work with core data with your UI table view controllers in your applications. So before we even begin, we need a core data data model to work with uh, for a specific game. I've already created one here called Game Model, but I'm just gonna show you how to create this from scratch so you can take your application and add one also. Basically, just go into your project, hit Command N, and type the word data on the filter, and this will bring up the core data model. We're gonna add this to our project just by hitting new. I'm just gonna call this one uh, My Model. We're gonna add that to our project, and it's in here where we want to add the core data entity that we're gonna to use to drive the data of our application. So in this case, I'm gonna have a very simple construct called game. That's gonna be my entity. So I'm just gonna click the add entity button down here, come up and change the name of this to be game. And game is gonna have one attribute, name, and it's gonna be a string. So I'm just gonna create a string attribute. I'm going to give it a type of string. And that's all we need to do. At that point, we've got an entity with a name string. If you go shift command B and build, that will do our all of our good core data stuff behind the scenes. It'll create the entity object, make it available for us. If you want a refresher on how to introduce core data into your project, click the link above there. In our intro to core data video, we'll show you how to set all this up from scratch. These are the steps I just had to go through in order to create this game model data object. And with that, we're now ready to replace this array which is driving the UI with an NSFetch results controller. So the way to think about NSFetch results controller is this is really a super handy query object which meshes really nicely with UI table view controller. It's almost like a mirror. Think of core data and all your entities here and you need some kind of view controller to get that information. The NSFetch results controller, when you set it up, maps really nicely to UI table view controller and helps you calculate rows, sections, individual cells, and it will also handle all the lifecycle things when you insert, delete, update, and move cells seamlessly with core data. It really just merges these two worlds together and gives a really tight coupling between the two, so we have to write less code. Okay, but let's leave the swipeable here and go over to our core data demo and our core data fetch results demo. And here we have a blank view controller and let's walk through how to add an NS fetch result controller to this view controller and set it up so they can do inserts and deletes. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to define our NS fetch results controller, which we can do just like this. We can define it here along with the entity game. And at this point, we've just declared it to set it up down in this load save data method, we really need to do two things. One, we need to create a fetch request, which is basically gonna describe how are we gonna fetch the results for our results controller. We're gonna find a fetch request for a game. We have to pass it a descriptor, which basically is how we're gonna sort it. And we specify a batch size, in this case 20, which means we're gonna limit it to 20. And at that point, we can pass that request along in with the view context to create entities and core data and pass that into the fetch results controller and then set ourselves up as the delegate. This is basically it. This is how you set up this NHFetch results controller. And once we do that, we're kind of set. 
The key thing to understand here is one that we've passed in a request saying how we're going to fetch the results, but it's really this bit here, this view context. This single view context is what binds everything together. Because what's going to happen when we go through the rest of the example is we're not going to work with an array of adding strings and uh, keeping track of our arcade games. That way, what we're going to do is every time we touch this view context, it's going to alert us via the results controller, and then it's going to communicate back to us via the delegate. Just look at this picture here. Here you can see how we've got a view context, which we passed into our NSFetch results controller. And because it has a delegate that we registered for, we're going to get notified whenever we touch or do anything with core data via the view context. That's really the key to understanding how all this works. It's really magical. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so let's say we want to add a game to our fetch results controller here. And let's say we want to add in the game Frogger. When I hit add, that's going to go ahead and add that to core data. Core data is going to let the NS fetch results controller know about it. And then there's a callback that occurs that updates the table view. Let's see how that works. So down here in the add button press target, all we do is add a game to core data. This is just standard core data stuff. We're not talking about tables here. All we're going to do is read the string from this text field, pass it into this method called create game, and then do core data stuff to add that game into core data and hit save. That's it. Once that's done, we're done at this point. We're not going to update the table like we did when we were working with an array. Normally we could just do the animations and update the table here, but we're not going to do that. It's now a two-step process. Once we've added the game here, it's a callback that occurs later on down here that really notifies us when something's been inserted. So here we are. This is the delegate that we can implement called NSFetch Results Controller Delegate. We've registered for this, so we're going to get notified when any of these things occur via the view context within the Fetch Results Controller. So when an insert, a delete, an update, or a move happens, when anything touches core data, we're going to get notified via that loop, and we can react to it here. And here's really where we do stuff with the table. It's only once we know whether we're inserting or deleting do we then call the corresponding method on table view. Let me show you what I mean. Let's add in another game here. Let's add in the game uh, Space Invaders. I'm going to set a breakpoint here under Control will change content. I'm going to set another breakpoint here to show when the insert happens. And I'll set another breakpoint here. This callback will say uh, did change content. So there's a will change. Here's the change, and then did change. Watch what happens when I hit add here. First thing that's going to get called is this one here, will change. So it's letting us know we're about to change the content of the results view controller. And I'm telling you about it here. So this is where we can do our safe table view stuff and go begin updates. In other words, we're prepping the table view to do the updates. Let's continue. Now we get a call back here, did change. So here it's letting us know something changed at this index path. And in this case, it's an insert. So now you can do an insert at this new index path with a fade animation. That is what's going to get the table to refresh itself. And if we go again, now we get down to the uh, did change content. This is where we can use our table view and updates. And this is how we can safely update our table view as a result using that NSFetch results controller. It's magic. That's kind of all that happens. And the key thing is just understanding that looping picture of knowing how everything is set up and delegated. Same thing for deletes. If we swipe to the left here and we go to delete a game, watch what happens when I set a breakpoint here on the deletion callback. I'm going to go ahead and delete this row. It's going to go through the exact same mechanics. It's going to call will change content so we can begin our updates in the table view. It's then going to call the actual delete or this is a callback, it's deleted it from core data, now we can safely delete it from our table view. And then it's going to let us know, hey, uh, I did change the content, so here you can do your table view and updates, and that will all animate and happen nicely. Then just about the only other really important concept to understand is this NSFetch results controller becomes the source of truth for your table in your view controller. 
So when you're populating table cells, for instance, you want to get the object from the fetch results controller, not some view model you might have created. This is your view model, basically. Because it's got the core data context, it has a really nice interface between the fetch results controller and your table view. You can even use the same language it uses in the table view, things like index path, to pull objects out, get the data you need from them, and then create and populate your cell. Don't get it from core data itself. Don't get it from the view model. Really use this as your source of truth because it keeps track of all the things going on behind the scenes and ensures that everything is kept in its proper state in the view controller and the table view. Okay, so that's just a very quick overview of the NS Fetch Results Controller. I'm still learning this thing. We've just scratched the surface. If you see a better way of doing anything I've shown you here, please let me know. I think it's a really powerful construct. It's one I want to get better at, and I'll continue to share anything I learn about it with you here on the channel. All right, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.